How did FNAF go from posting Five Nights at Freddy's news on Twitter to becoming one of the largest and most beloved FNAF channels? Was it merely a lucky video or his connection to more prominent FNAF creators? In today's video, we will cover the rise of one of the most popular theorists in the Five Nights at Freddy's community. And to better understand FNAF's growth, let's go back in time all the way to a Twitter account by the name of Coffin Updates. Here, FNAF was first able to share his love of the franchise with others by posting news about Scott Cawthon's personal websites like scottgames.com and other general news concerning the franchise. And on this account, FNAF did well, amassing around 20,000 followers, which was no small feat. And while his account grew, John, FNAF's real name, turned to a new social media platform, YouTube, to expand his reach. His first upload was titled Major Five Nights at Freddy's Movie Update, and it's here in this first upload we see John's personality really show. In his video, you can hear the excitement and joy he gets from talking about this franchise. John can continue to upload, experiencing success and growing his channel with each video. Some of his most popular uploads include top 10 or top 5 videos, and the occasional video speculating or analyzing different pieces of information that Steel Wool or Scott Cawthon leaked in preparation for Security Breach's release. However, approximately one year later, everything would change for John. As a FNAF fan, the month of June in 2021 was one of the most chaotic months for the franchise. It was in this month that Five Nights at Freddy's creator, Scott Cawthon, would be caught in a controversy that seemed to divide the fan base like never before. People had found evidence that Scott had donated funds to Republican politicians. Some of the politicians Scott donated to have policies or wish to enforce policies that oppose the LGBTQ community. So with FNAF having one of the most diverse and inclusive communities, these donations split the community in half and would cause Scott to retire officially and step away from the franchise he created. In his retirement, the website, scottgames.com, would go dormant, and John was now faced with the challenge of what to do next. So, did he give up? Walk away from his channel? Absolutely not. John went on to create more content and more videos concerning the release of Security Breach or cover some of the released Fazbear literature. And when December 16th, 2021 finally rolled around and the world was able to play Security Breach, FNAF popped off. He released multiple videos tackling this game and giving the FNAF YouTube space what it wanted. A theory video on the connection between Vanessa and Vanny? Boom. The connection between Gregory and the Crying Child? Boom. A theory video explaining where Glamrock Bonnie is and that is currently his most viewed video? another boom. But do you notice the connection between these three videos? They are all theory videos, and they show another side of FNAF. You see, John's audience got to see something different from the FNAF updates guy. They saw John attempting to put together the pieces of FNAF's lore, and nine months after his Gregory video, John would release one video that would completely change the course of his channel. The video was titled, I Solved FNAF Security Breach, and to this day, it remains one of the greatest videos a FNAF content creator has ever made in my opinion. In this video, John presented his theory in one of the most comprehensive and entertaining ways the internet has ever seen. From the pacing of the video, John's presentation, the discoveries made, heck, even the background music was immaculate. John could have told us that Garten of Ban Ban was crossing into FNAF and I would have believed it, which is the point. John had found something successful, and don't just take my word for it, the video currently has 1.6 million views, and it's for a good reason. It's a good video. So, it should come as no surprise when I tell you that FNAF made a part 2, which also performed well, and a part 3, which also performed well. John was creating theory videos that entertained viewers, and most importantly, it got people thinking. You see, for many years after the release of FNAF 1, there weren't that many channels consistently creating high-quality FNAF theory videos. A lot of it fell on the shoulders of Team Theorist over at Game Theory to create and educate fans of the franchise as to what was going on. So when John started making his theory videos, his effort was rewarded properly. Even MatPat has made videos over on GT Live reacting to and praising John for what he's created. This ties back to why he's become successful. John is a change of pace. He's another perspective another mind willing to subject themselves to the torture that is solving FNAF's lore. However, not everything for John has been sunshine and rainbows. While John has made multiple theories about the FNAF lore, none have been more criticized, torn apart, and hated than his video about Midnight Motorist. Now, the video starts off like any other theory video. John attempts to illuminate and explain some new confusing portion of the FNAF lore. For this specific video, he chose the minigame Midnight Motorist, which is found in FNAF 6 by driving your car through a secret opening. The cutscenes and dialogue found in this hidden area are still widely spoken about to this day. Many believe it to be from the perspective of William Afton, the franchise's villain, and some believe it to be of Henry Emily, the one who burns what's left of Freddy Fazbear's in the same game. So John did what he was best at, providing some theory or some line of reason as to what truly happened. Now, I have immense respect for John as an individual and a FNAF creator. But even I have to admit that this theory was uh, a little much. It took certain liberties and made a few leaps that I didn't follow. But it was a theory at the end of the day. Certainly, people would just see it as a theory and move on with their own opinions. Right? Nope. People across all social media platforms like Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube took their shots at FNAF. Now, it is entirely fair to criticize and disagree with the theory someone makes. 
After all, you are putting that thought into the public, so you have to expect a response from the public. However, in character with the internet, some took their criticism of John's theory way too far. Some took this as an opportunity to take shots at John's knowledge of the franchise, and I have personally seen tweets that took shots at his intelligence. These tweets, videos, or posts were unwarranted and do not belong within the FNAF community. But John wasn't the only one to receive comments like this. In a recent game theory video, the grandfather of FNAF theorizing, MatPat, even had to address that the response to FNAF theories overall has gotten out of hand. Now to clarify, I'm not saying every FNAF theory viewer is some angry and grumpy person. Of course not. I'm sure you're an awesome person who'd be willing to press the subscribe button and the like button. Still, the point is this loud minority of viewers whose aim is to be rude and disrespectful got to someone like John who had never experienced something like this before. John even tweeted about how shocked he was about the response, stating, The comments on the new video are getting to me. I will never understand why people get so mean when they don't like a theory. It makes me sad. I just like making my little theories, that's all. It's not that deep, lol. And while some time has passed between that Midnight Motorist video and now, John continues to make tweets reiterating that it's okay to disagree with him, but not to be disrespectful. But has any of that criticism hurt him now? Absolutely not. John continues to keep creating amazing content and has had multiple videos cross the million view mark. While some of the unfair and undeserved criticism still exists, he continues to put forward his best theories and ideas for FNAF fans to enjoy. His work has drawn the attention of not only larger FNAF creators like MatPat, but also the creator of the franchise, Scott Cawthon, who has come out of the woodwork to appear in his live streams and chime in on his theories. But to be honest, how could Scott avoid it? John has been doing great things on his channel from day one. From his first FNAF news video to now having the entire voice acting cast of Secure to reach on for a live stream. John is doing amazing things, and these will continue to ramp up. While all of this is indeed amazing, there's one more important and profound thing I believe the FNAF community should get from watching FNAF. It's that John is just one of us. FNAF represents every fan who has wanted to share their crazy theories with other fans, those of us who want to channel our theory-focused brains into solving this franchise. You can see his love and passion for this franchise in every upload, every theory, and every livestream. So as a fan base, let's root for people like John, like Rytost, ID's Fantasy, and yes, MatPat. While we are allowed to disagree on our theories, let's never forget that it's our love for this franchise that holds us together, and we can't let the stupid things separate us.